Hello and welcome to Minigame, a podcast about video game stories and why we love them. I'm Michael Ferris. Time is weird now. Ever since the pandemic began, days feel too long, and yet the weeks and months appear to be flying by, and we have no idea when it will stop. Kind of feels like we're all on some kind of train, hurtling towards an unknown destination and time of arrival. It is the same feeling that inhabits what is probably my favorite game, The Last Express, a game all about the persistence of time during a period of history in which change feels inevitable, yet hidden in the shadows of the past. The Last Express takes place on the famous train, the Orient Express. During the nebulous period of time between the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand and the onslaught of World War I, you play as Robert Kath, an American doctor who is on the run from the law for a murder he did not commit. He receives a note from his friend Tyler Whitney about a secret meeting he wants to have with Robert on the Orient Express. Robert arrives on the train only to find his friend murdered in his sleeping car. Robert takes on the identity of his dead friend to figure out what happened to him. Along the way, he finds that Tyler was deep into a shady arms deal involving treasure, violence, and political intrigue, all the while racing towards a final destination of Istanbul. Not only is Robert Kath racing against the clock, but you, as the player, are as well. Large portions of the game run in real time, and you need to pay attention to the routines and conversations of your fellow passengers. Eventually, you'll have to learn all the ins and outs of what everyone is up to and how they all relate to each other. However, due to the real-time nature of the game, you also do need to think on your toes and act fast. Otherwise, you could miss a vital piece of information or an opportunity to snoop in on other compartments. As an example, early in the game, you can overhear a conversation between two characters. They mention briefly about keeping some unnamed object in another room on the train. Naturally, you get a little suspicious, and you spend the next few in-game days studying the habits of not just the passengers involved in the conversation, but the staff of the train as well. If you do realize you have missed something, you can't thankfully rewind time, but pinpointing exactly how and when you failed can be tricky. It seems as though everyone on the train has to carefully manage their time and are fully aware of the escalating international tensions that inhabit the world. There is a German businessman who is becoming increasingly wary of the weapons deal he has set up with Tyler Whitney. There are groups of Russian and Serbian freedom fighters who always appear to be stone's throw away from killing each other on the train. A woman is caring for her ailing grandfather who looks like he can pass away at any moment. A femme fatale is masquerading as a world-famous violinist while secretly being a spy. All of these amazing characters seem to either be racing against the clock or trying to wait out the clock, awaiting hidden destinations and goals. This combination of narrative and play mechanics converge into one of my favorite sequences in any video game. The violinist and a mysterious man of royalty put on a small concert in a private passenger car a duet of violin and piano. Most of the other passengers show up and are distracted, and you have complete carte blanche of most of the train to explore, snoop, and investigate whatever you need. You are given a full half hour to catch up on things you may have missed, or if you've already completed what you need, you can just kick back and watch a lovingly crafted and composed concert. The game is composed of rotoscoped live-action actors, and even with the rudimentary animation of the mid-late 1990s, 
you still feel the emotions of the characters and their performances. By the end of the game, you stand amongst the ruins of a destroyed Orient Express. The train itself has run out of time. Locals all around you are running and screaming in terror. War has broken out across the globe. Peace has run out of time. The world as we knew it has also run out of time. Yet, as credits roll, we are shown a map of Europe, and we see the years go by. Borders change, countries come and go. For a game so focused on the passage of time, this ending for me says that no matter how much garbage the world can go through, the world itself is capable of moving on. And maybe so should we. Thank you very much for listening. Executive producer of the Lore Party Podcast Network is Abu Zafar. Minigame is written and produced by Michael Ferris. Original music for Minigame is composed by Lawrence Kelly. Subscribe to Minigame and all the other Lore Party podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow Minigame on Twitter at Minigame Podcast and visit our website at loreparty.com. Thank you very much for listening.